All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. You are watching The Kim Iverson Show. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me, kim at kimiverson.com. I love to get your messages. I love to get your questions. Uh, so thank you guys so much for uh, messaging in and emailing. I do read all my emails. I'm just not able to respond to all of them, but I do read them. Um, okay. Nancy Pelosi says that she has the votes to impeach Trump. Let's go ahead and go over this. This is a political article here saying that the House to vote Wednesday as Pelosi gets the votes to impeach Trump. Says the House will vote Wednesday to impeach President Donald Trump for inciting the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol last week, just seven days before the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her leadership team informed members on a private call Monday they will need to return to the Capitol for many, the first time since January 6th attacks on Tuesday night, impeachment is scheduled for consideration at 9 a.m. When and Wednesday, if Trump refuses to resign and Vice President Mike Pence won't initiate other procedures to remove him. So she's wanting to, re to impeach Donald Trump. And, you know, it is absolutely within her right to pursue impeachment. That is the, the power of Congress when we look at this, that, you know, these are three equal but separate branches of government, but they are equal branches of government. Uh, Congress has the power to remove the president of the United States if they believe that the president of the United States has committed some, I don't know, actually, I'm not a constitutional attorney. I'm not 100% certain if it has to be an actual crime. I don't think it has to be a crime. It could just be something that Congress finds to be abhorrent enough uh, to, to convict. Now, they can impeach for anything, but the actual conviction in the Senate, I'm not 100% certain if it has to be a criminal offense or not. But she has the right to impeach. So this will be round two of the impeachment. We've all kind of been through this before. So I think the novelty of it has worn off. We all know what this means. It means that they will most likely impeach him. Um, that will then go to the Senate. Then the big question is, because this is where it becomes unprecedented, is will the Senate then, which of course the Senate will take this up because it's now Democrat controlled, and will the Senate convict? Now, in order to convict, the Senate needs to see, I believe, a two-thirds majority would need to vote to convict him of the crime. So there would have to be a trial uh, and they would have to then go through that process and two thirds. So you'd have to get quite a few Republicans on board. It'll be interesting to see if there are Republicans that decide to convict um, with him no longer being president of the United States. It'll be really interesting if they feel like he still has political sway and power and how much do their supporters, their base, it's not even really about Trump, it's about their base, how much of, do they think that their base is going to be turned off by their vote if they say, yes, we're going to convict him. But let's first of all talk, talk about why she wants to convict or why she wants to impeach. Now, she says that he incited violence. Now, this is where it gets really important. I want you to pay really close attention to this because this also affects all of us and it affects our ability to protest and the words we use when we protest. She says he incited violence that led to Wednesday. I want to read to you the quote of what Donald Trump said at the actual event that he spoke at before the protesters headed over to the Capitol building. He said, now, and this is what they're saying is the problem is that he says, you know, we got to be strong. And and uh, so he says, quote, we're going to walk down anyone you want. But I think right here we're going to walk down to the Capitol and we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering on cheering so much for some of them because you'll never. So this is what they say is the issue, because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated, lawfully slated. But then he says, I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. So they're honing in. Now, I, whenever I'm reading the news, I'm never hearing that last sentence that he says in that exact same paragraph. This wasn't like later on. This was in that same bunch of words. He said, I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. So they're honing in on, I never hear that in the news. I only hear in the news uh, that because you'll never take back our country with weakness and you have to show strength and you have to be strong. 
and they don't like those words, and they felt like those words were the words that would incite the violence. Uh, I Look, you can hate Trump all you want, but you cannot allow your hatred to blind you. I don't hear anything in these words that say, uh, bring your zip ties and your ice picks and break into the building and, and don't allow the vote to happen at all. And if they do, we're going to take it by force. We're going to ensure forcefully we're going to go in there. You know, we're going to uh, and actually plans to invade the Capitol building and plans to forcefully stop our democracy. I'm not hearing that in these words. Now, if people take words and they interpret them in a certain way, I don't think I don't know how we can as a society who wants to continue to have protests at the Capitol building or anywhere in D.C. for that matter or anywhere around any government officials ever again. Uh, I don't know how we can say, well, because he was the president of the United States, his words mean more. And therefore, even though he didn't directly call for violence, he uh, because he was uh, lying about the election and he was claiming fraud and he was uh, saying all of these things, citing that, the, you know, he was robbed and he won by a landslide because he said all these things. That was the problem. And that led to him inciting violence. Now, I don't agree that that incited violence. I do think you could maybe impeach him for not accepting the results of the election if that's an impeachable offense. I mean, if you want to have that conversation, I'd have to think about that and whether or not I would even agree with that. But, you know, maybe there's other things to impeach him over in this. But I don't know if you could say because he incited violence. I'm not seeing any words that incite violence. Now, if you want to say it's because he said you'll never take back our country with weakness, you have to show strength, you have to be strong. I would like to know, does this mean going forward that we're not going to be able to use certain words such as fight and force? Are we not going to be able to use these words when we decide to protest our political leaders in the future? Will we not be able to say things like fight racism? Will we not be able to say things like push for climate change, for climate action? Are we not going to be able to say take back our government from those corporate oligarchs? Or how about force the vote for Medicare for all? Will we not be able to use these words because they will come back at us and say, these words are violent words, and now somebody actually went and they forcefully, uh, they, they actually pushed the, some, a member of the squad, you know, they went and they did something aggressive, and that was because Jimmy Dore said, force the vote. Is that, do we really want to go down that road where we say, if you say aggressive, violent words such as fight, push, take back, force, that this is inciting violence. So, first of all, I don't think they can make the case that he incited violence this way. I even think with him coming out saying, and they said, well, how dare he? He, you know, did it again. This is kind of what happened in Charlottesville. He did it again where he came out and he said, you know, there's good people on both sides. And he did it again by saying, I love you. Go home. You're special. You're very special people. I love you. Go home. And they accuse him of somehow that, I don't know how you could say that. I don't know how you could twist that in your mind to say that that is somehow violent speak. You know, him saying, we love you, you're special, go home. That is the absolute opposite of violent speech. But somehow that is being construed as part of the, making the case that this, that, that Trump said, you know, these abhorrent violent things. Now, look, he has a crappy personality. It's beyond crappy. Uh, the guy is, you know, he's just not a likable person at all. And I do believe that right now what is happening is not based on anything he actually did, but it's just based on sheer hatred for him. The fact that they can now, that Democrats are fully in control, big tech companies don't have to worry about Republicans as much anymore. They don't have the votes to do things like repeal Section 230. They don't have the votes to harm them in any way. And so they're feeling emboldened. And so what they are doing is they are censoring. And now the Democrats are feeling emboldened by having both chambers of Congress. And they are now saying, well, now we're going to get you uh, and we're going to say that you're inciting violence and uh, because you use these fighting words, these words that apparently are, are going to be potentially banned. And if they're not banned outright, there's going to be a chilling effect. 
that chilling effect will be that these major political voices, celebrities, political leaders, uh, you name it, they're not going to want to use these words. They're not going to want to join in on protesters on protests if they believe that they will be viewed as so powerful that they will be held accountable for the actions of people they don't even know. There is no evidence that Trump actually had any communication or Trump's team had any communication with these people who were planning on any sort of violence inside the Capitol building. There's no evidence that that was coordinated, construed, or even egged on. Also, you know, the real reason why they're wanting to do this is because they're wanting to ban him really from running again. Uh, What they're hoping is that Trump will, you know, he'll be impeached, which, you know, they're going to do that. And then when it goes to the Senate, they're hoping that he will be convicted. And once he's convicted, he will be barred from ever running for president for public office again. That's what it will do. It is essentially a way to thwart democracy. Because when you when you accuse a person, first of all, uh, in my mind, you should not be allowed to be or or I, I guess you could maybe it's allowed, but. Culturally, once again, we shouldn't accept our congressional leaders just impeaching presidents willy nilly when it hasn't been an actual crime. I, in my mind, it should be an actual criminal offense that is legally against the law and the president is not above the law and absolutely should be charged with crimes and potentially have to face prison time if they commit crime, actual crime. And if you have the evidence of that crime, they shouldn't be pardoned for that crime. They should go to jail just like anybody else. I don't believe that they're above the law, but I do think you have to have something to that level. Now, if the Senate decides to convict him and they say, yeah, well, we think he, you know, he, he did, he was uh, lying about this. No, there's no law against lying, but oh, he lied. And so therefore we're going to impeach him. This is just them thwarting democracy is all that it is. It's them saying we want to ban this person from running again because we are afraid that they are so popular they might win again. Who cares if he runs again? Do you really think he's going to win? And if your answer is yes, then you are actually thwarting democracy if you're saying this guy cannot run. If you say we are going to ban him, let me remind you, this is what we accuse dictators of doing. When we accuse foreign governments of being dictators, it is one of the reasons is because they find legal loopholes to ban their opposition from running against them. For example, Putin, Vladimir Putin. What has he done to Alexei Navalny? Uh, let me just show you. Let me tell you right here. In twenty three, and, and uh, it turned out that the that Alexei Navalny has now been banned from running for election. He was banned in twenty eighteen by Russia's Central Electoral Commission on in December of twenty seventeen. Sorry, due to his prior criminal conviction, uh, they said that he is unable to run for election. That he has been boycotted and he's unable to run for election. Okay, he cannot run for election. Now, people often want to talk about Maduro down in Venezuela, our own government, people on both the left and the right uh, always want to point at Maduro as being a dictator. And one of the reasons is because they say he doesn't run fair elections. Well, uh, why is that? Because a couple of his opponents, I believe three of his opponents, have been banned from ever running for political office. Juan Guaido banned from running for political office. Says here that uh, in February of 2019, he was accused of going on a variety of trips and he didn't even he didn't uh, say how they were paid for. They said that this these trips cost ninety four thousand dollars and that he had not explained the source of funds. And based on these alleged financial discrepancies, Guaido was barred from running for public office for the maximum time allowed of 15 years. So he's not allowed to run against uh, against Maduro for 15 years. Uh, Lepaldo Lopez and Henrique Capriles have also been prohibited from holding office by the Maduro administration on similar pretexts. This is what, when we say somebody, now, you know, again, those of you who've seen my coverage on Venezuela, hold your thoughts if you're thinking, oh my gosh, can't you're buying into these establishment narratives. Don't go down that road. I'm just using an example right now of what people in our government, the very people who are wanting to ban Trump from ever running for office again, those people are the same people who point at Putin and Maduro and they say, the, these people are dictators because they ban their opponents, their political opponents, from running for office. And now they are here wanting to do the same thing. So the way democracy should work is we the people should decide. If we don't want Trump to ever hold office again, we will not vote for him. That's the way it should work. Should he be charged with crimes if he's committed them? Yes. 
Should he be prosecuted to the full extent of the law if he's committed crimes? Yes, that has to be proven in a court of law. But yes, if he's committed crimes, he should be. And at that point, if he's committed crimes and he's convicted legally, I don't believe he is eligible if he's if he's convicted of certain crimes forever running office for running for office. I, I think there are actually limitations on convicted criminals. So, uh, you know, she's going to impeach. That's within her right. I don't I, I, I do believe that this will be used against us. However, when they say incited violence, it goes back to these words. They're going to say, well, then no one's allowed to use these words, apparently, or at least the precedent will be set that you cannot use these words. That's where the, the impeachment becomes dangerous if they're picking the wrong reason for impeachment. And if it goes to the Senate and he ends up being convicted, it is and it's not because of an actual crime that has been committed that he could be thrown in jail for. Then it is just an attempt to thwart democracy. That is my take on that.